For a while now, we've had an app called AstroPad on the iPad, which turns your iPad basically into a Cintiq-like drawing tablet. It mirrors your Mac's display, and you can draw directly on it. Works really well with the Apple Pencil and all that fun stuff. I've reviewed it before here, and there's a link down in the description. And a question that is very common that I get whenever I talk about AstroPad or anything like it is, hey, what's available for Android that does basically the same thing? So I've decided to test out some different apps and go through the pain and agony of trying to find that so you don't have to. The first app I took a look at is called Wi-Fi Drawing Tablet. It's free with ads, but you can disable the ads by paying a very specific $1.74. This isn't exactly like AstroPad because it's not mirroring your screen. It works more like one of the Intuos tablets where you're drawing on it while looking at your screen over here and the lines are appearing on your screen. At at least in theory, unfortunately and full disclosure, I played with it for a while and I never actually got it to draw. It starts off with a message that says that you have to hold one finger down on the screen while you're moving your pen or other finger around to draw. I only got it to ever move around my mouse cursor. I never got like a, a line to appear in any of the apps that I ever tried. Also, if you can get it to work, it doesn't work with the S Pen in terms of uh, detecting its pressure sensitivity. And how the app works in general is you're running it on your Android tablet and then on your Windows device, you have to install, install like a secondary app. And in order to install that app, you have to install Java. I hate installing Java. Mostly because installing Java tries to hijack your web browser and change your homepage to Yahoo and do all sorts of goofy things like that. I don't know why this is acceptable in the world of Windows. And it's probably like, I've gotten used to Windows. I've, I've grown to like a lot of aspects of Windows. This is the one thing about Windows that drives me nuts. This isn't, of course, the fault of the developer who made the screen sharing program. This is the fault of the people who make Java. Anyway, that's enough about Java. I'll get off my soapbox now and, uh, oh man, now I'm out of frame. So this app has mixed reviews. A lot of people had a lot of the problems that I had. Some people had no problem at all. Like I said, there's ads in it. It's free. You can go check it out yourself if it's something that you're interested in. The next app is probably the best of the bunch. It is called Virtual Tablet. I checked out the free version, Virtual Tablet Lite. Like the last one, it's not a Cintiq thing. You're not directly drawing on the picture on the screen. What you're doing is drawing over over here and looking at your screen over here and seeing the lines show up. One of the upsides about this tablet that I liked is that it has these like ghost lines on it. So you can actually see on your Android tablet where you're drawing is drawing a little line. Uh, so if you do want to look at that when you're sketching, you can do that. And then over time, over a couple seconds, the lines that you drew slowly fade out. So it's kind of like an Intuos tablet, but you also have the benefit of seeing where exactly you drew. This app does support the S Pen and it has surprisingly good pen pressure. I will say this, on Wi-Fi, I found a fair number of hiccups, actually one hiccup, and that is, is that whenever I was drawing a line, periodically it would literally hiccup and like I'd get these blotches of paint that would show up. So I was never able to get a consistent or, or normal sized line. So that kind of made it a little bit unusable for me. I just lost power, so I'm just gonna keep recording without a light. There are several different ways that you can connect this to your Android tablet. You know, I was using Wi-Fi. I thought maybe if I used USB or Bluetooth, the other two options, maybe I'm gonna be at a better connection. Maybe there's gonna be less latency and maybe we can get rid of those like hiccuping lines as we draw. I tried the USB solution first. I thought it might be better, but I never actually figured out how to make it work. And honestly, the whole process was really kind of hacky. You have to enable developer tools, which which means you have to tap on some random thing like seven times and do some other goofy things and even then I couldn't get it to work. Next up, I tried to connect with Bluetooth. Who doesn't like Bluetooth? Put your hands down, that was a rhetorical question. I have like a 50% success rate with Bluetooth in normal life and unfortunately this one was on the negative side. I was never able to get the Surface Pro to recognize my tablet, so alas. You know, I, I couldn't get it to work via Bluetooth. I wasn't able to test that out. But overall, if you are looking for something that kind of replicates a drawing tablet experience on your Android tablet, this is probably the best place to look. There is a free version, so you might as well check it out, you know, see if this works yourself. The next app I checked out was called Draw Necked. I couldn't get it to work. Basically, it's still in the App Store, but the link to the Windows doodad to actually run the server for you to connect to, that link is dead, so... I guess this app isn't under development anymore. So I moved on to the next app. It's called Air Stylus. This one looks promising, but 
It has horrible reviews and it costs $14. I'm so sorry guys. I was kind of at the end of the review and I was like, dude, I am not spending $14 on one more crappy piece of Android software. I guess that's the good and bad of the Android store is that if you're a hobbyist and learning to program, you know, it's a place where you can actually put your stuff and sell it if anybody's interested in it. The downside is that Oh, it gets really expensive just paying for software that just flat out doesn't work or sucks. So there's a whole other set of apps out there that look like they might make good drawing tablets but aren't specifically made for this purpose. The one that I'm looking at here today is called Parallels. It is a way of remotely accessing your desktop computer. And one of the nice things about Parallels is that it allows you to control and access files on your Mac or PC anywhere in the world. So it's not working locally over Wi-Fi like a lot of the drawing tablet software is. Unfortunately, this creates a lot of lag with the pen when you're drawing with it. So overall, it's a really good app if you're looking for like a remote desktop access app. It's not a really good app if you're looking to draw. So what else is out there? There are apps out there that are a little bit different like uh, Space Desk and Splash Top. What these are are second monitor apps. Basically, you can't really draw on them. Uh, they're designed to be second monitors to connect with your PC. So they were a little outside the framework of what I'm looking for here, which is turning my Android tablet into a drawing tablet. So sorry, I don't have better news. I think the answer to the question that I posed at the beginning of this is, is there something that can turn your Android tablet into a drawing tablet? The answer is no, not really. There's nothing out there right now that does it. Maybe, you know, down the road, someone will build something that really works well, you know, across different platforms. But right now, it's just not there. So thanks for watching to the end. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down in the comment section. Always, you can hit me up over on Twitter. And I'd also like to thank everybody who supports this channel in a myriad of ways, whether it's clicking on my links, visiting my websites, or even supporting me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later.